Organization for Child Fellowship is a Christian non-profit with a mission to support the needy through evangelism and lending a helping hand. Founded in May 2015 by Reverend Gabriela, she's made a lot of impact in the lives of many children with a very small and humble beginning. The Organization for Child Fellowship has supported children in areas such as health through our health screening, areas in education through some of our library projects in Adan, our library project in Osena Singh, our library project in the Volta region at Bapa, and also through our feeding project. Through our five-year journey, we have supported a lot of hospitals, a lot of orphanages, a lot of communities. Not forgetting our prisons project, we have made donations to all the funeral prisons in the country. We want to use this medium to thank our sponsors and all our individual supporters who have been a part of this organization. Not forgetting our volunteers, we want to say a big thank you. I want to say a big thank you to God Almighty as we celebrate our five years. We will still need your support to continue impacting lives as we work on our current project on a center to accommodate street children with a vision to reduce the number of street children. You can support us by calling the number on your screen and visit our website through the link below. Thank you so much and God bless you. Welcome lovely people once again to the Noble Woman Show. This is your host Gabriela and today we are going to have a chat with Lady Apostle Precious Destiny S.S. Kofi and she's, she has a story to tell and I would be glad if you stay tuned to listen. I'm a herbal and skin clinic. One more name, a befo, quite so, essa, and yarwebi to say. Choke, diabetes, typhoid, infertility, bone injuries, and yaria ahu duinina. Saban, one name, any, and yarwan, so stretch marks, and cocha, one more eternity, one more OPD, one more lab, baby, I hear, nipa yemoja, and a yajun so, and whoop, I say, was so eti. Relief fatigue. Ninina yanu e yeah mwajuma wa kwa ye chita kwa ya wube huye e watema committee eleven general hospital quantum ponwa bra wa pa shell full station ne hope pepe. Ube timi afray e wa zero five zero eight two six one seven two five and a zero two four four eight eight four seven nine three. Alna herbal and skin clinic. A year juma a joa da kosi fiada seven AM to five PM. Minu ya number stretch mask e hamu. Anasa five word ne e hamu. Odi e bra alna herbal and skin clinic e bit tree two. Alma Herbal and Skin Clinic. Are you planning a trip or you're going for a holiday with a lot of destinations all over the world? Just decide on where you want to go and see Ryan Travels will take you there. We offer you a visa, air ticketing, tour packages hotel reservations, corporate travels, and many more. You can contact Sirang Travels on 0264-623-091 or 0302-408067. You can email Sirang Travels at c.ryantravels at gmail.com. Sirang Travels, you pack, we plan. Lady Apostle, 
Can you tell us who you are? Um, a kind of a person you can't really lay hands on. Just because at any position of time, looking at what is happening and what I want to do, I change. What do you mean by that? For instance, I was married before. Happily, it's children, four children. That life was very different. Because you had somebody who is always there for you. You could call that person anytime. Pour your woes on him. And he's there to support you in anything. But after that, it's like you are alone. Okay. The marriage life has to do with your husband, your children, and yourself. But when the man is not there, there is always a gap. There's always a a gap. A huge gap. Very, very huge gap. Uh, what, what does the gap entail? Because before you got married, you were alone. And so what is it? Yes. Difference? When you are alone from the beginning before you marry, you know you're a single person, a young woman coming up. All life is ahead of you. You do what you can by yearning to marry. Now, you know marriage turns your life around for you to come into contact with another person whom you don't even know his background very well. But by the grace, you learn to live with that person. That person becomes your friend, a brother, a father, and everything with me. That is how I took my marriage life. So, people who knew me or knew about my marriage life were like, now that this man is known, can this woman survive? Okay, so that brings about you being able to be any person at any time. Yes. As in, I've come out of the marriage life. How? Why? What happened? Unfortunately, my husband was involved in an accident on his duty call. And that rendered me a widow. And my children fatherless. Me being a widow, I think it's a fate, so I shouldn't live a life of misery. So, would you say that, you see this African thing where um, when the husband dies, they maltreat the woman? Did you go through that? Oh, mine was worse. Talking about that. When my husband even died, I was not in the country. But I received several calls that confirmed the families went into my marital home to carry things out of my marital home to their home. And I learned a lot of things happened they came to call like bashing in the house, cursing me, accusing me of killing my own husband, even as it was an accident. And so that thing still exists in, in this modern time? Yes, it, it does. Because I have, since then, been the issues of widows. So what did, what did they actually do to you? Some of the specific things they actually did to you? I was dragged to the mortuary. 
I was accused of killing him. I was accused of being a witch. I was accused of being a thief. I was accused of being a prostitute. Yes. And I was forced to stay in the dead room as in where he was laid. In fact, I did not. For that, I did not. But I was dragged to the mortuary to identify the corpse in the cold room. Yes, to that extent. Their claim is their tradition or culture. But people around me, it was cruelty. And they think they have abused my rights as a woman. So what did your family do about it? Uh, to start with, before I even came back from abroad, my family had insults, tons of insults because of me. Yes, even to the extent they could say I was not going to mourn my husband because I killed him. Yes, it even went to the extreme that they brought in their family tradition, killed a fowl over my head. Herbal and skin clinic. One more nam a befo quite so essa and yarwebi to say stroke, diabetes, typhoid, infertility, bone injuries, and yaria ahu duenina. Sabon honam any en yarwan so stretch marks. Enkocha, one more eternity, one more OPD, or more lab, baby, I hear ni pa ye moja, any ya jun so, and whoop a say was so eti. Relief fatigue, ninina, yanu a ye mojima, or pray it to a quaya, whoop a huyang, and what tema, committee eleven, general hospital, quantum ponwa, bra. Park Shell Station, no pepper. I'm going to be afraid. It was 0508 261 725 and 0244 884 793. Alna Herbal and Skin Clinic. A year, Juma, a Joa da Cosi Fiada. 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. When you are number stretch marks, a hammer. And as a five word, a how. Oh, dear, bra. Alna Herbal and Skin Clinic. A bit true to Maria and Yami Dim Ebeko. Alma Herbal and Skin Clinic. Yam boot tire and a gunner for a pump. So that the foul was killed over my head. And I was being accused as this performance oh, were going on. They, they, they killed a foul. And they, so they, 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 they did sprinkle the blood on me, but it was killed because in front of me, they got me standing. And they refused none of my parents or my family to come close to me. Why? That is their tradition. But anyway, and your family to support them? My family didn't support me. There has been this struggle since the death of the man. I told my family, I went for that marriage. I was ready for anything. I told my family not to involve themselves because I know that my hands were clean from the death of my husband. Apparently, my husband was a wonderful man. I started womanizing, going after different kinds of women. Definitely, a man who defiles his bed has broken the hedge. So the serpent to bite before my husband died. I was a pastor. I graduated from Anna Kazu by school College. But that thing of Married to a husband who doesn't even see the call of God upon your life. He buried my call. He and the family. Because even the family were like, 
this your wife is a crazy woman. Because look at the lucrative business she has as a profession. Now she calls herself a pastor. You understand? And he too went as far as telling me, I really need a psychiatric checkup. Really? Oh yes. Yes. But do you think that um, these kind of traditions and things, because I, I was thinking that at, at this time in this world, these things do not exist. These things are there. I have some widows in some villages and houses. No, they are in the villages. So at least you could say that, okay, I will not be surprised if it's happening in the village. But in the city here too. A lot. There are a lot of widows who are still going through these things. And so what do you think we should do about it? We are supposed to gather them, educate them, which I already do. The women? Yes. I already do. Educate them, empower them. And I also ensure that when there are little, little things I can do for them, I do for them. Okay, so what would you say, uh, uh, or how would you say that a widow should live life? In fact, in my 12 years journey. You've been a widow for 12 years? Yes. Oh. My 12 years journey of widowhood. I have seen widows who become indoor prostitutes, drunkards, depressed, all sorts of things. Some keep blaming themselves for being in the family which maltreated them. Some, some are even 14 years in widowhood, 12 years, 10 years, 2 years, 6 years. But they don't seem to have a grip over their life to say that maybe enough is enough. This is fate. So let me see what I can do for myself. To the extent that if you even offer them a helping hand, they refuse to receive. Why? Yes. I don't know that much. I can't tell, but these are some of the things. And at the end of the day, we hear that the person is no more. The person is like this, like that, like that. So I don't know, but there is more to be done. And I would also say that people should be ready to receive the support others give them in time like this. When I meet them or I'm told about any video, I want to offer a hand by the means I have. Okay. And when I see, or oh, maybe the means I'm having is not the appropriate means to help the person, I see how I can reach to anybody who can give the assistance to the person. So what should be the source of uh, motivation for a widow? How should a widow motivate herself without anybody being around? In the book of Timothy, it says Anna, a decent widow, or an honorable widow. An honorable widow should be honored. Okay. Okay. It also says in the Bible that a widow who is not yet 60 should not call herself a widow, but can re-establish life and continue life, married so that she can take care of her family. So, I live by the standard of the word of God. So even if there is nobody around, you should look at what the Bible says in our reading. God has promised us He is the father to the fatherless and a husband to the widow. 
That is the word for the Bible quotations that I started with. And so you think that's what every woman should? Should start with? Yes. Believing in the word of God for yes. a widow. Yes. As a widow, you should pray. A widow needs to pray. And pray more than anyone else. One, because you have no hope. Human beings will fail you. The pastors will fail you. Most pastors will fail you. But on this platform, I want to mention one or two names of real pastors who were there for me and my children. Bishop Gideon Titi Ofe. was one of my strongholds. The man was there for me. The big sister, Mama Franklin, was there for me. Reverend Mauli Agotogo was there for me and he's there for me till today. So there are still good pastors. But I want to encourage widows not to just believe in just any God. They should put first their faith in the word of God. God will bring those that he has chosen to support them. I think that from the little you said, a widow should have a stronger relationship with God. But yes. at that time they are alone and, and the only way to and feel that gap of loneliness is the spirit of God. Yes. Thank you. Maybe that is why some people called me and asked me, it looks like I'm enjoying my widowhood. And I'm like, yes. You see, God is all we have. He's the only great provider. God doesn't change and God doesn't lie so if you hook on this God and you do it sincerely carry your cross daily dragging your flesh to the brazen altar daily my God Jehovah Nisi, the king of kings, the husband to the widow, I. Are you planning a trip or you're going for a holiday with a lot of destinations all over the world? Just decide on where you want to go and see Ryan Travels will take you there. We offer you a visa air ticketing, tour packages, hotel reservations, corporate travels, and many more. You can contact c Ryan Travels on 0264-623-091 or 0302 can email C Ryan Travels at c.ryantravels at gmail.com. C Ryan Travels, you pack, we plan. Oh, hear me, oh widow. The kind of life you will lead after your husband dies is very, very crucial. It can rather break your children's life or build the path. Come to your uh, work as a as a missionary, yeah. as a missionary, as a physiotherapist. Yes, uh, let, let's talk a little about that. So. Me being a consultant in therapies is a bit of a problem for me as a minister. One because. I'm a very good, a, special, a specialist in Masoe. 
a specialist in massage. And in the industry, men want women to massage them. Women want men to massage them. So I end it there. You understand where it goes. What would be your last uh, words to a young lady out there? Every young lady out there must first fear God. Let God be the overall of your life. Be respectful, obedient, and humble. Because humility takes you far. Today, I see young people are so rude, indisciplined, disrespectful, and all the adjectives you can use for that. So they are not going far. But like me, I was very serviceable, and today, and still, I am serviceable. It doesn't age is now. I have people I call mummies and daddies. And when I get to them, I serve them. It doesn't change my title. It doesn't change who I am. But I know I receive blessings by doing that. So the young ones should learn to be very humble. Thank you, mommy, for coming to my show. It's, it's, it's been a very wonderful time here today. It's been an awesome time here. This has been the Noble Woman Show, the show that seeks to inspire young women and educate young women. I am your host, Gabriela. See you sometime next week. God bless you. Vision for Child Fellowship is a Christian nonprofit with a mission to support the needy through evangelism and lending a helping hand. Founded in May 2015 by Reverend Gabriela, She's made a lot of impact in the lives of many children with a very small and humble beginning. The Organization for Child Fellowship has supported children in areas such as health through our health screening, areas in education through some of our library projects in Adan, our library project in Osena Singh, our library project in the Volta region at Bapa and also through our feeding project. Through our five-year journey, we have supported a lot of hospitals, a lot of orphanages, a lot of communities. Not forgetting our prisons project, we have made donations to all the female prisons in the country. We want to use this medium to thank our sponsors and all our individual supporters who have been a part of this organization. Not forgetting our volunteers, we want to say a big thank you. I want to say a big thank you to God Almighty as we celebrate our five years. We will still need your support to continue impacting lives as we work on our current project on a center to accommodate street children with a vision to reduce the number of street children. You can support us by calling the number on your screen and visit our website through the link below. Thank you so much and God bless you.